Hi everyone, this is Rashika Pandey. Welcome to the online classes of C++. In my previous video, I have discussed about the building blocks of C++. Today, in this video, we will see what is the structure of a C++ program. Basically, the way or the structure we will see how we are going to write one by one the main things which are required in the C++ program. First is your declaration of preprocessor. Then we have global declaration. Then we have main function and then we have user defined function. Now we will see one by one what are these. Now what is preprocessor? Preprocessor is a small program which runs before our compilation process. Okay, now student understand preprocessors are basically to include your header files. What are your header files? These header files are necessary to build our program. They contain some predefined features or some operations which are predefined and allow us to write our program easily. These predefined functions are being developed by the per people who have developed C++. By the time they were developing, they have made some of the files, some of the header files are there, which are being developed for us to use in our program. Now we will see what are these files. Now, first we will write hash include. Now what is this hash include? This comes under the preprocessor part. Now what is this hash include? It allows us to use those library files which are being already made by the people who have developed C++. Okay, those files, whenever we want to use those files, we always use this hash include as a preprocessor directive that allows us to use those library files. Now, in this hash include, what type of files we are going to include? We are going to call up a header file which is IO stream. Hash include and comes under IO stream. Now what is this IO stream? It is a header file for input output objects like C out or C in. Children, IO stream is for your input output operations. Now when we will be asking user to input some value or we will be giving some output to the, to the user we need some predefined functions over there so basically these predefined functions are already being developed in the c++ compiler and these functions are being stored in this header file so we are going to use this header file to use these functions now we have conio now what is a conio? It is a header file for console input output functions. For an example, get ch and clr scr. Okay now, conio is again a kind of a header file in which console functions are being stored. So whenever we will use, whenever we want to use get ch or clr scr and many of these kind of, we always have to include the header file which is the conio. And if we want to use those input output operation, we have to include the header file which is IO stream. Now we will see what is a main function. The execution of the program starts from the main function. Children understand in every program there must be a point from where the execution starts. The main function is the one. The compiler always searches for the main function. So whenever it will find a main function, your execution of the program will start from there. If it will not find a main function, the execution of the program will not start and therefore you will not be able to get the required output. There will be an error. So we have to, this is our mandatory thing to include main function in the program because the execution of the program starts from the main function. Now we will see what are the other things which comes after you have declared your main. Now we have CLR SCR. As just now we have discussed, this comes under the header file of Conio. So what is CLR SCR? CLR SCR is basically used to clear the screen. It is a function which has been used to clear the screen. When we want to see the output, Suppose so many outputs have been there generated, it will, you will find it difficult to make out which output is the latest one or the correct one. So we will use this to clear the screen to and to present you a fresh screen. 
okay so whenever you will be generating a output a fresh screen will be there with the current output value now what is endl how do we re read it endl okay e n d l no space in between endl a keyword to display output in next line whenever we want to display our output in the next line we use this keyword endl we will see what is the main purpose of this when we will come to the programming part as of now you just see that it is a keyword to display the output in the next line now what is see out as now we have seen see out comes under the header file of io stream now we will see what is it purpose it purpose is to print the text on the output screen whenever we want to print whenever we want to give the output to the screen we have to use this see out object to give the print to the output screen now what is scene again this also comes in the io stream header file because these both are the input output functions objects so what is scene to accept the input from the user whenever we want to accept input from the user we will be using this object now what is get ch get ch this comes under the part of conio header file now we will see what are its purpose it holds the output screen as long as it gets a character from the user children the main purpose and how it works will you will be getting to know it more easy when we'll come to the programming part as of now we you just understand that it holds the output screen until and unless a user enters any of the key press any of the key so at that time you will be again taken back to the coding screen but as long as you do not press any key it holds the output screen for you okay it holds the output screen as long as it gets a character from the user that is why it is written get ch means get a character now we will see method of declaration and initialization of a variable children as in my previous video i have explained you what is variable so now we will see how we are going to declare them and initialize them first is data type variable name now what is this data type again i have explained you in my previous video what is a data type now data type we have to mention before we we will be writing a variable name so int age int is your data type and age is your variable name so similarly i have float cm cm basically i have used for centimeter you can use any other variable also so float cm float is your data type and cm is your variable name another way is you are declaring and initializing at the same time data type variable name equals to value means whatever variable name is there you have to specify its data type and at the same time you are inputting the value also to the variable for an example int age is equals to 10 see children here i have mentioned int age i have just declared it not initialize it now what is initialization children when we are just writing the variable with the data type it is known as declaration we have not given any value so as of now it is just been declared but here i have given a value so it is known as initialization where i have given a value to the variable so it is known as initialization starting value is been given initial value is been given so data type variable name equals to value int age equals to 10 similarly float cm equals to 2.5 by 2.5 because this variable is of data type float and can only hold floating point so therefore it is 2.5 now let us take our very first example program program to print hello world means on the output screen we will be printing hello world how we are going to do that let's see first line that we will be writing in our program will be hash include io stream dot h children as we have discussed these are the pre processor lines and we have discussed about the structure of the c++ program where we have to include the pre processor before we start our main program so here i have included hash include io stream dot h hash include io stream dot h io stream is your header file dot h which means header file 
IO stream is necessary to give output on the screen. If we will not write this, we will not get the output on the screen. Now, second is I have included hash include conio.h. Now, what is conio.h? I have explained you just now that for console input output function, we need to include this header file. Now, after this is your main. As just now we have studied, main is very important because it marks the starting point from where the execution of your program will start. So, I have written void main with this bracket. Why void main? Void means nothing. It means empty. So, this program is not going to return anything. This whole functionality you will get to know in your higher classes. But as of now, just understand we have to write void main. Then these are the opening curly braces, which means after this we are going to write our program. So, this marks the beginning of the body of your program, body of the main. It marks the body of the main. So, this is the opening curly braces. Then I have written CLR, SCR means clear screen. This function comes under this header file. So, I have written CLR, SCR which means if anything which has been outputted in the screen before this program executed, so everything will be cleared. So, for that I have written clear screen. Then I put a semicolon. Children, understand that after void main, all the lines that we are going to write in the body of the main, all the lines will be terminated by this semicolon. They all will end with the semicolon. Now, after this, I have written C out. Why C out? C out is used to give the output. So, I have used C out, then this, less than, less than, two times, less than, less than. These are known as cascading brackets. What are they known as? They are known as cascading brackets. Then inside double quotes, I have written hello world. Because this is what I wanted to print. See in the question. So I have written hello world. And then double quotes closed. Children understand whatever we will write inside the double quotes. Same thing will be there on the output screen. Compiler will not do anything for whatever you have written over here. Same it will be there on the output screen. So here I have written hello world. Then exclamatory mark. Also I have written and then I have put a uh, closing quotes. So I have written this. Then again less than less than altogether. This is known as a cascading brackets. Then endl. Endl. E-N-D-L. Endl for the next line. If I want to print something even after that. So, it will be printed on the next line, not after that. So, I have written endl. And then again, semicolon. Why semicolon? As just now I have said, that everything, all the lines which is written inside the main block will be ended, will be terminated by this semicolon. So, again, semicolon. And then get ch. Get ch, bracket, semicolon. Why get ch? To hold the output screen. Then we will come to the practical part. You will get to know that if we will not write this. We will not be able to see the output screen. So to hold the output screen. We have to write this statement. And then there is a closing bracket. Which marks the end of this block. So this is your simple program. Where you can print anything. Just not hello word. You can print anything inside these two double quotes. Okay, so before we get the output, what we need to do first is we need to compile this whole program and we need to see that if there are some errors there or not. So for that, there is a shortcut key to do that thing that is Alt plus F9. Alt plus F9, we need to press them all together and from there the compilation process begin. From there we will be able to see if any errors are there, compiler will be guiding us. And if there are some errors, lines will also be mentioned. We can correct those errors. And if your program is error free, then success will be displayed. After that, you need to press on control plus F9, that is CTRL plus F9 to run your program. And as soon as you will run your program, the output screen will come displaying this hello world. Thank you.